Mark Finlay joins me now from BP. Mark, thank you so much. Tell me a little bit about the importance of this dialogue for the big IOCs particularly. Etna. So, well, within BP, it's great to be a chance to have the opportunity to be part of a international global conversation on energy issues that brings together academics, policymakers, companies, and other uh, people who are interested in the energy space. And so, it's really great that the IEF and the IEA and OPEC, and today with CAPSARC, having a chance to convene that and bring people together to exchange views and perspectives is really helpful. Now, of course, some of these views are going to be differing. Um, we might have quite a few diverse views in that. But again, this is what's very, very healthy about this very private meeting that actually you really get a chance for a very frank and open discussion. Mm -hmm. Th that's right. And, uh, you know, we were uh, happy to have the opportunity to share some of BP's perspectives uh, based on our recently published Long-Term World Energy Outlook, um, which isn't really about predicting the future so much as it is about understanding what are the key forces that will shape the energy system and the key uncertainties and what are different pathways that the world's energy system may take and how can we all as participants in the energy system learn about our you know our business and the policy issues that confront us you know in in the face of that uncertainty and of course your energy outlook as well the BP energy outlook a very substantial body of work that you put a lot of work into every year um, do you find that over the years you're seeing a lot more cooperation and collaboration, even with the work that you're doing then with all of the other agencies and the people that work to put all of the outlooks together? Um, well, I think that that's been a big part of the uh, the success of the IEF here. Uh, you know, the ability to bring producers and consumers together um, and to get from uh, you know what had had many times in history been a confrontational relationship to more of a dialogue uh, and to get people talking to each other rather than at each other. Now, talk to me a little about the CAPSARC roundtable, the thought leaders on that. Again, some interesting discussion there and really bringing the importance of research into this. You must all contribute to the very importance of research and I guess it's a, it's a knowledge exchange in many ways. No, absolutely, and it's a great opportunity to hear perspectives in today's, you know, on the implications of a potential peaking in oil demand at some point in the future, uh, and to hear different perspectives on what that means, what might bring it about, and what might the consequences of that be. So when we look back on the, the BP outlook, um, what do you say in terms of the peaking of oil demand? Well, I think the first thing we say is let's not fall in love with our own forecast because the future is so uncertain that you know we produce a central case for the purposes of having a conversation. Um, and you know the important thing is not to think that you know better than anybody else, but to present something that gives you a basis for talking with other people to say, well, if we're wrong on the uptake of electric vehicles, or if we're wrong about assumptions about fuel efficiency or about economic growth, how might those different um, it factors impact the outlook. So that was a, um, a long way of saying, let's focus on the uncertainties rather than our outlook. Now I can give you our outlook, which is that in our reference case, we do believe that oil demand will continue to grow through 2035. The rate of growth will slow due to significant improvements in fuel efficiency. We do believe that uh, electric vehicles will become competitive eventually, but there's a huge uncertainty about when and how quickly uh, they will be uh, penetrating their way into the fleet. And so, in our central case, the big driver of oil demand in the later years of our forecast is uh, the use of oil out that is not combusted. So, you know, petrochemicals and other feedstocks, and that's important because, of course, if it's not burned, it doesn't add to CO2 emissions. Um, but again, that's a central case and it's highly sensitive to the assumptions that you make around the pace of development of electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles and other digital innovations in transportation as well as other factors that I mentioned earlier oil prices economic growth uh, improvements in fuel efficiency as well